the YouTube, Miss Clover here. We're on the ground in Belgo Hill. Or Belgo Hills with an S at the end of it, depending on who you ask. We're going to be doing a massive flight today in a rather quick aeroplane called the uh, Lancer Legacy. Sometimes known as the Lancer Legacy 2, Leg 2. We'll be flying above 10,000 feet today, which means we need oxygen, by law. Uh, we'll also be doing a 400 and... 70 odd nautical mile trip which is humongous and insane and let's look at how we're going to get there so uh, the aircraft itself the Lancer Legacy carries 63 gallons of fuel on board and that burns about 10 gallons an hour in a level cruise flight at 12,000 feet leaned out properly that means we will need to be looking at a range of about mm, well, the aircraft can probably burn fuel for about five hours legally. We're going to get it in under four hours because we do need some holding fuel. And it'll probably burn a bit more fuel climbing, but a bit less on the descent. But just so we don't go blasting off into oblivion with uh, no clue, <laughs> as would be our normal way of doing things, uh, we're going to be filling out one of these again, a Legacy 2. This is an empty navigation log, and we're going to be flying from YBGO, Balgo Hill, to somewhere, and at the end of this, we're going to be at YGIA, uh, our destination. Now we've got to fill in everything else in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where we're actually flying. Here is an interesting little place along the way that I was looking at. In the Sandy Desert, actually that's in the Gibson Desert, Well 43. That's the most uh, important landmark in that location. There is a well. And that's the kind of stuff we're up against. Anyway, let's have a look. Belgo Community, coming out of the uh, runway there. We'll assume a straight direct line. <clears throat> Here's a big chunky lake called Lake Gregory and if we zoom in here we can see that we have uh, Paruku which is an indigenous uh, protected area. Basically the Aborigines own this lake and its area around it and you need a permit to go there. Fortunately you don't need a permit to fly over it at 12,000 feet. Now, that's about 60 kilometers before we hit the bottom of the lake. There is a little bit of a creek that comes out of the bottom of the lake which we are going to be using as a I guess they call it a waypoint now I've done the math already 60 kilometers is about 32 nautical miles after passing that lake in 32 nautical miles which we'll call the Gregory I guess Gregory Creek Gregory Lake something like that let's pop uh, this whole thing up so G-R-E-G -E good old Greg uh, what's the minimum safe altitude in this location? It will be on the chart. The chart is here. <laughs> is that the correct chart? There's Hooker Creek, there's Tennant Creek. Yeah, that's the correct chart. Let's so at Balgo Hill, which would be out in south of uh, Kananoa, south of Horse Creek. There it is, Balgo Hill. So we are in an area which is 3,000. We're going to be well above everything here, but we'll chuck in 3,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, 3,100, 3,400 by the time we get down here. So we're going to stick in 3,000, here's the MSA. I'm not going to chuck any calibrated airspeed in because it's going to be about 240 once we reach our cruise altitude. Uh, we'll worry about that one, don't airborne. Uh, we want to climb up to 12,000 feet, but we're not going to get there straight away, are we? So. Let's call it oh, 7,000 feet, something like that. Um, true S speed on the climb is going to be about 180 knots at best. And the track in that direction, we'll try to fly the entire track in the same direction. And we have that off our sky vector plot from the entire route. Zooming into here, we have a track of 247. 
if we stay on that same track the whole time across, we'll be laughing. Uh, the wind. So I need to check out where the wind is. So here is the wind forecast. We need to find out where we are in this wind forecast. So one trick that I'm going to do is check where we are in relation to that. It's Balgo Hill. And we're directly south of this little indent near Kandara. And pretty much directly south of where that little bump is before Port Hedland. Uh, directly to the east of that bump. The bottom of the bump. So, drawing a big red line. There's the bottom of the bump. Bring it out to there, all the way over. And there's that little bay. Balgo Hill is about here, right in the middle. The other thing we do is a straight line straight to Gin Beta or Gin Beta. I think it's Gin Beta. And let's see where Gin Beta is. Gin Beta is near this Christmas Creek area, so it's about level with here and almost directly south of that little bump. So from, I think this is, what, PLM? And directly under the bump. So I'll find the bump first. Something like there. It's more like there, isn't it? Cut that down south. And about here. So I'd say about that position. And we're going to put a nice little yellow line directly from here to here. About there, I reckon. Yeah, maybe about here. Cool. Cool. So that little yellow line is where we're flying. <laughs> Let's zoom into it. And we're going to pick up some wind data. Now this wind data is valid between flight level 140 and down to 1,000 feet. It is current for today and was forecast about two hours ago, so it should be valid now. Um, we're looking at how many feet. So the second one, uh, the third one down for this one, and then the top one for the rest of them. So the third one down here is 008 and 007. So that's eight. Uh, 080 at 7 knots. Chuck that in here. 080 at 7 knots. We've got a heading, we've got a ground speed. We do not yet have a uh, distance, but I'm going to st stick that in now. It's 32, and we're happy. Welcome to Aviation Math. Uh, so from Greg, Lake Gregory, we're going to continue on to the next obvious position and as far as I can tell there's nothing until we hit this spot here which is I'm going to call it a salt lake of some sort I don't even know what salt lake it is it doesn't have a name in Google apparently <laughs> so I'll just call it salt so there's a salt lake minimum safety is still 3000 or so it's probably uh, 2900 by now uh, we're going to be at 12,500, and we're going to be doing um, true airspeed of about 230 knots. Uh, the track is 247, because we don't want to change anything. We're just going to fly a direct straight line. And the wind is in this next section, and it's going to be the top one. 120 at 19. Good stuff, and the distance is a 70 miles. 17 minutes to get there. Not too bad. Okay, back to the big map. What's the next big thing that we see along this route? And I've chosen it's going to be probably this thing here. The Nullagine Lakes. So this here, if you zoom in, is the Nullagine River. It's often very dry river. As you can see, that white stuff is salt. 
So that's Dried Salt River. It's a river made out of dried salt bed. Anyway, there's a little lake north of Nullagine. Again, Google doesn't have a name for it, but I'm going to call it the Nullagine Lake, which we're going to go ahead and call from the salt thing to Nullagine, N-U-L-G. Cool. Again, 2,900, 12,500. Doing 230 knots, 247, and the wind down in this section is much the same. It's the same, for, uh, it's a little less actually, 12, 120, and 17. Coming over here, we have a distance of 99, because I did plan that before we came onto the stream. NULG to what's the next thing I'm looking at? Back to the map. Somewhere around here, this Nullagine River sharply turns to the south, and then we lose it. So, Nullagine South. NULS, still 2900, and still at 12500. Still doing 230 knots, hopefully. Uh, 247. Double check the wind. Yeah. Significantly less now, isn't it? So that's uh, 0108. Is it? No, it's 100. Sure. Here it is, 100. And that's eight knots, is that correct? It is. That's horrible. Eight knots. <laughs> do, do, do. And the distance there is 50 nautical miles. So we're going to go ahead and do the next position. Down here we see a Lake Dora, Dora the Explorer. And as we cross uh, just north of there, like a beam the lake, we're going to stick in our next position. So from Nulls to Dora, still going to call it 2,500 now, uh, 12,500 feet, still on oxygen. Uh, the wind is down here, I'm going to call it the same, 0108. And the distance there is 51. So from Dora the Explorer, we're going to find the next position that looks interesting. And here, I'm accidentally stuck in that, but anyway, if I zoom in, we will see this little river here with a big chunky gorge. So that should be obvious. There's a big cliff face there. And I was actually looking this up on uh, Wiki. And I found this. Apparently, that there is a massive cliff face, which we're actually going to be flying almost directly over. Kayaks in the desert. This is the Great Sandy Desert. There's this lake with a massive cliff, looks like a gorge. There it is. And that's called the Carawine Gorge. I like wine, so let's call it the wine. Dora to wine. Uh, this pops back up to 3,000 feet MSA. Still going to be at 12,500 feet. Still tracking along at as fast as we can go. 247. And the wind's probably changed a little bit by now. Uh, only by one knot. So it's 100 at 9 knots. And the distance to um, Carawine is 91. <clears throat> See wine. <laughs> Let's not have that expand. Quite a lot of ATC in Australia. That's good to hear. Alrighty, so I've looked at the Carawine River. And let's see it the next bit. Yeah, 
There's a little creek, don't really care about it much. There's a weird depression in the ground with a whole bunch of stuff seeping into it. Bit of a ridge line here. I think I might go with that. There's a nice little fork there in the, the river. Nothing else obvious. No, that's good to me. Cool. Might do the fork. There's a fork there. We're going to call this a little bit rising up again. It's about 3,200 or so. Uh, one, two, five hundred still. Still tracking along. All the same data there. The wind, much the same. And the distance to that uh, fork in the river is 28. So from the fork, Oh, there's another river. River crossing the path. X River. I believe that's where the MSA increases as well. Got to throw that back over there. So this is coming down past Teller in towards the next bit of the map and we see 3,400 sitting here that's the highest position just before Jin, Jin Banner like 3,004 might even consider coming back down to uh, 10,500 for a bit so we do need to start descending right about here still 230, still 247, still... Uh, is it still? Yeah, looking at uh, 0, 07, 0, 10. And the distance there to the, which runs this, the Cross Track River is 24. After that, we should find we're pretty, getting pretty close to Jin Bella by now. Where are we here? Another couple of rivers. Is there anything really useful in here? I don't know. Don't really want to be sitting there counting rivers. I want to see something a bit more interesting. What are we up to now? The Cross River. bunch of mess down here. <laughs> Is anything useful in here that we can have a look at? Oh, there's a road. Yeah, that's a road. We'll chuck the road in. It's kind of a track more than a road. That's fine. Should be on the descent by then. Call it uh, 7,500 off the O2. What's the highest altitude we can be at? We need to be even, don't we? That's so going to be something more like 8,500. Uh, say 220. Still 247. Uh, we'll be descending by now, so it'll be in the 7,000 section, which is a 1, 2, 3 down. One, two, three, so zero, two, zero at seven. And that distance is 19. Don't even need that one. And 
And what's the altitude at Jinbella? Because Jinbella's just down the road here. We'll cross that road and then pop straight in. That's only 10 miles, so that's perfect. We cross the road at about 10 miles out. Beautiful. Do, do, do. Halls Creek, don't need that track. We do need this one. It'll be 4,100, that's even worse. <laughs> Gin Butter's up here, 3,004. Cool. And whatever it is, about 4,500, something like that. Getting low. Hi there, Taught Inspector. $10 for math. How about that? That's um, even slower speed, about 160, 247. Uh, wind, the lowest that we have on the chart, which is 0107. And the distance of 10. And there we go. 123 minutes. This thing will take uh, 58 uh, fuel minimum if we're holding a 45 minute reserve. Remembering that we burn 10 gallons per hour. So 45 minutes is 7.5, which is, you know three quarters of ten. I've just tucked in a nominal value of uh, two uh, two gallons for a missed approach and uh, another two gallons for an approach and extra holding. Uh, reserve fuel of ten that'll get us um, an entire hour. Now if you do go onto the chart here you can see that next to our little airport here of Ginbata which is right there Directly south of that, not even not even 20 minutes flight away, is Newman. So if we can't get into Gimbatta because I know Re uh, Gina Reinhardt hates us or something, because she literally owns that airport, then uh, she can send us down to Newman. Speaking of which, Gina Reinhardt owns this airport. So, looking at it. Roy Hill Holdings, the Roy Hill Mine. You have to write to the aerodrome manager, Gina Reinhardt's um, <laughs> employee, to request permission to land at the airport. You give them a call on the phone, you'll write them nice emails at the aerodrome. Restricted operations, prior permission for itinerant aircraft, which is us. Uh, terminal access by prior arrangement. We'll see that we've got that because we've made phone calls. We do have an AirBP available on the airfield, so we can refuel here. Uh, terrain is uh, 1,562 feet above sea level and all that stuff. Cool. So, uh, FIU signal not heard on the ground. There we go. A little bit of history about that airport when we are on the two and a bit hour flight to get there. I'm going to lock that back to the top. I believe we have uh, 63 uh, gallons of fuel on board. Let's walk over. Hope the math didn't bore you too much. <laughs> it was starting to bore me. Anyway. Beautiful weather, not a single cloud in the sky. We're kind of on the edge of the Tanami Desert, which is slightly to the north of us and to the uh, east of us. And um, directly south of us now is the Gibson Desert. But uh, once we do get past that lake, that first lake at uh, Gregory, we're starting to push into this great sandy desert. The... Um, the Gibson Devitt will still be to the south of us, most of the way through. In fact, I should probably show you a big map of all the deserts in Australia while we do this. What's the difference between all the deserts? They've got different names. I don't know why they're different. <laughs> they just do. Anyway, I'll just jump on to the old wiki. Grab the image. There we are. So here we are. We're kind of sitting here on the edge of the Tanami Desert, number three. And we're going to fly 
pretty much across the majority of the great sandy desert number two and we land just on the edge in the Pilbara but you can also see here the Gibson Desert number five just to our south so we do braze across it but to be honest we stay in the sandy desert we should be able to see the Gibson Desert but we're going to be mostly across the sandy desert today's flight but right now we're on the edge of the Tanami Desert named after I don't know her. let's have a look Tanami Desert So, the name Tanami is, as I thought, an Aborigine name. It's a name in the Wapiri language, which means never die. And the reason it's called never die is because there are certain water holes through the desert which never dry up. That's because they're connected to the Great Australian Artesian Basin underneath a large majority of Australia. So the Great Artesian Basin is this big chunky water table underneath the rock of Australia and the Aborigines knew it was there so the Never Die Desert Then you've got the Great Sandy Desert which is named because it's big and sandy yeah, literally and you have the Gibson Desert here which was named after an explorer who sent his assistant, Mr Gibson off across the desert to find his way to Alice Springs and he was never heard of again That explorer was Ernest Giles, and he sent his uh, assistant Alfred Gibson, whose horse had died, and he said, well, your horse has died, so I'll give you my horse. We'll camp here in the great sandy desert, and you go off and get us help. And if we don't hear from you in about three months, we're going to walk back to Broome. So six months later, they walked back to Broome, and then they named that desert the... Gibson Desert because Mr. Gibson disappeared in it somewhere. Anyhow, this is our wonderful little ride, a very small aircraft, two-seater, very fast. This will be pumping along at 230-240 knots, especially with that 10 knot tailwind most of the way through. It is a bubble canopy, which is going to get rather warm, which is one good reason of going all the way up to 12,000 feet. Very slippery aircraft. It does have a speed brake on the top of the wing, which pops out. And yeah, very small aircraft to do a massive trip. This is longer distance than the Milk Run. Let's jump on. So you had to jump into the aeroplane, you've got the door handle on the back there, so you can reach it without stepping on the wing. Once you do have the canopy open, you literally just have to climb onto the wing and drop yourself into the seat. Let's get ourselves ready for a pre-flight. Hi there JB. Cool. I'll drop this here and pop on out. Very warm sun. I'm going to pick up the weather as well out of Napes. Which I did forget to log into. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, for the next three hours, let's call it uh, YBGO and YGIN. Maybe not GIA. Hmm. So that didn't have much of an anything. There's Balgo. <laughs> And our airport's in there, so we're picking up two areas for the next three hours. We 
West Angeles isn't too far off. It's in there showing a temperature on the ground. And I've got a prob tempo on there with variable 20 knots gusting 30 knots, 4,000 thunderstorms all the way over there. Bull is getting the same. So in the mine sites, going to be some thunderstorms possibly. That's not cool. Kundawana, Day of Few Falls Forest is a cave okay, but Kundawana is a thunderstorm. Newman's cave okay. Alright. Parabud is not. So it's kind of like a very hard line um, of areas that have bad weather and areas that have good weather. Very strange. Gonna pick up Dalgo Hill hopefully. YBGO. No current, no tab for Bagel Hill. We'll try Hulls Creek. There it is. Cav OK. Temperature 30. And the current temperature is 35. QNH 1012. Not bad. We'll be in the flight levels today. Literally, actually, climb to the flight levels. Alright, the first thing to look at is the flaps. Give them a good tug, make sure they're not falling off. Cool. Back of this we have two little static things which are the um, VHF antenna. Some lights, more lights, speed brake installation right in there, a pitot, good looking landing gear that is retractable. Door should be open while it's retracted. Down at the bottom here we have a very good looking uh, exhaust manifold. Pop down here, do a little tampering with the fuel, make sure we've got enough. There's the fuel nozzle on the edge of the wing here. Open that up and take a look inside, making sure there's enough in there. Front of the engine, three propellers. Making sure there's nothing inside all of those bits. Nose gear's looking okay. This nose wheel and a little bit of a fuel check. Checking the fuel in that tank should be full. Checking out our brakes over here. Ailerons, more antennas. Flaps, making sure the tracks are okay. There's nothing much at the back of the aeroplane except for the tail and the elevator and the trim tab on this section of the elevator on the other side here. Right there is a trim tab. Only one trim tab on this aircraft. And of course the uh, rudder. Make sure that's all attached and happy. There is a light at the back as well. And let's jump in. Who is the passenger? The passenger is you. <laughs> Passenger is Mr. Hugh Tube. Yeah. Cool. Okay. It's really, really warm and I'd love to leave that canopy open, but we can't have the engine running with the canopy open. I'm just going to turn on these, chuck on the uh, Mars Ray Relics, see how, take a look, see at what it thinks that the fuel capacity is currently, is 32.9. Oh, that's in, what's that in? Oh yeah, that's right, 32.9. Good old calculator time. 65.8. according to that. We've got more. Yeah, we've got full tanks. All good. Checking the heading, I'm showing uh, 056, something like that. Pause. System test OK. 5. Six, three, it's just off the six, isn't it? Towards the three, it's five, five. 
I think we're ever so slightly off the wrong side. This aircraft doesn't have an adjustable DG, so what you do is slew the aircraft until it matches what your heading shows. Which is about there. It's kind of reverse. You move the aeroplane to match your G DG, so the DG to match the aircraft. I reckon that's about right there. Alrighty, let's drop the uh, canopy. Not my true huh? we're just going to go uh, full there, break up the prop a little. Fuel boost, give it a couple of seconds, that's probably enough. Nav lights, strobe lights, clear prop, looking clear out there. Good start. Drop down to a thousand RPM ish. <laughs> Avi Alex. Might as well turn some lights on as well. Yep, merging Australia into voluntary administration. That's pretty sad news. Bad news. Alright, so the flight plan is pretty simple. We're going to Y G I A. Getting better, and it's uh, 468 nautical miles away. Altitude is going to be up at 12,500. We'll be climbing at a, uh, at a speed of about 1,500 feet per minute at the start. Going to continue this. And, after clearing the message, we're going to go down here to the nearest, pick up the airport, and there we go. We can see a couple of very small airports around. There's uh, Browns Range, uh, Tanami Mine, Margaret River Station, which is way up there, Horse Creek, which we were at on Wednesday, the Granites, which are in the Northern Territory, uh, Belburn, Fitzroy Crossing, places we've been before. Probably the most interesting one is Belburn. Yeah, cool. So I'll stay on that mode. We're in 1200. I'll start reporting altitude now. That's happy. Pop the flight director on. Arm altitude. And check the heading. I'm showing uh, just out of 61, so it'll be 50, 55, something like that. Yep, that's about right. Cool. Let's have a chat to the guys on the ground here at the Balgo Hill. On the frequency on 126.7. That's already set. Beautiful. Make sure we're broadcasting. We are. Anything else that I need? Yes, the flaps need to come up. I'm just going to do a test on the speed brakes. Massive speed brakes, they just pop vertically directly out of the wing. And there they are closed. Cool. Uh, we may even need pillow heat by the time we get all the way up to 12. So let's have a look at our flight plan again. We had that set. That's all good to go. Do, 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 do. Set heading. First heading will be uh, 246. Magnetic. And I'll push the flight plan so it's a small one, not taking up the entire screen. First leg should cost us about 1.7 plus an extra two, maybe. So maybe 3.7 we'll give ourselves. 
Well, the runway is at Belgo. Runway is at Belgo. Once I close all of these extra windows, in fact, I'll put that inside here. So, Belgo Hill, runway 15 and 33. And the wind is currently out of the east. This is going to be runway 15. Traffic, Balgo Hill, X3 Tango Zulu is a Lancer Legacy. We'll be taxiing out to runway 15. We'll call once holding short. One thing I do want to do before we finish turning around here yeah, is just check out O2. We do have an oxygen mask today. O2 is looking good. Oxygen is off until we get up to 10,000 feet. Today I'll be using a stage 2 flaps for the takeoff since it is a dirt runway. Uh, it's half of like the approach flap setting. Trim on this aircraft is by the stick. The stick is in the middle of the aircraft. And we did solve that hole in the runway. There's our entrance point right over there. Seat locked in. Cab Halls Creek, the uh, altitude was 1012, 1500 feet, looks about right. I'll just double check it again on the map. 14 something, 1440. Right there, 1011 down here. Okay. Just gonna sit around here, make sure there's nothing behind us. Great. Parking brake is in, we'll do a uh, run up. Okay, manifold pressure should be up to 22, I think it was. Was it 20? Nope, oh, there it is, 17. It's quite warm, isn't it? RPM 2200. There it is, almost getting it there. Getting it, getting it, getting it. That's close enough. Yep, good drop. Over to the right side, good drop. Prop RPM. That's happy. Let's drop it down. Lean it up. That's an RPM again. It's quite a sensitive throttle, this one. Got a lot of throw in it. Our ALT, we're 1200. We'll give them a call. Traffic to Belgo Hill, X3 Tango Zulu, Lanta Legacy, entering runway 15 to backtrack. Brisbane Centre's online. We can give them a call. Once we're airborne, and request flight flown. Right, looking down here, I'm just turning on the landing lights. Happy with that, let's go. 
before we do enter the runway. Black controls looking happy. Runway's good on that side and great on that side. Wonderful visibility on this aircraft. Now in this aircraft we do have a G meter over there. That'll show how many G forces we're pulling because this is capable of aerobatics if you want to do it in a utility mode. Of course we've got a few bags in the back today, so let's not do that. This is the longest distance so far. Fortunately, we also have the probably the second fastest GA aircraft that I have for this little route. But yeah, so far this is the longest leg in distance. Not necessarily in time, so we have flown very slow aircraft before across pretty comparable distances. Mixed to fully rich, prop is fully forward. Flaps are set for departure, all the lights are in. Traffic Balgo Hill, X3 Tango, Zulu, Lancer Lexi, departing runway 15, left hand downwind departure. Time 15, let's go. Bouncy runway there. Get off the ground as fast as we can and into the ground effect. Stay in the ground effect for a little while. Jump and gear up. Gear is up. Flaps. Stage one. Trimming it up. Trimming it up. Flap stage two. And flaps up. Gear up, lights are out. Bank Hill traffic, X ray Tango Zulu is on downwind at runway 15. We'll be piling overhead field and then tracking westbound. Thanks for taking us up. And prop RPM coming back to 2400. That just should stay at pretty much the rest of the flight. Well, until we start losing engine power up above 8000 feet, anyway. Turn out. Time 20. So 
roll call of that leaving uh, Dalga Hill, time 20. A twenty. And we'll do some math later. Uh, what speed did we say we we're gonna climb at? I think it's uh, pretty much as fast as we can on the climb all the way up to was it eight thousand something or other feet? Check on the auto part a little bit after that. Yes, there's a Discord. It's the same name as the channel. It's for Labour Up, except all in capitals and stuff. Lachlan created it. Lachlan can send the link. Send the link, Lachlan. I'm going to go over to autopilot. Let's get that sorted. Bing. Hundred and sixty knots. It starts to relax a little bit now. Landing lights off. You know, heat just in case. There's any ice? There's none. I think this might be our lake. So it's only 10 minutes out since 20 time. So it'll be time 3-0 by the time we cross that uh, little creek. Should be doing 180 knots. True. Almost there. <laughs> Not quite. We may need to reduce our vertical speed a little. Do it a thousand, up, uh, thousand foot per minute. I'm actually going to select 1,500 for the moment. Might even uh, accelerate at 8,500 and then climb at the, uh, the higher speed. 8.5 set. Reducing the mixture, we can see the EGT rising as I do that. At some point that EGT will peak out and start falling again, so I need to come back up. Let's keep it off the peak. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit leaner peak because we are climbing. And it should uh, kind of climb up into it. RPM's happy. Speed's not the worst I've seen. There's 8,500. We're going to use this opportunity to do a couple of things. First thing we need to do is accelerate, which is happening on its own. Secondly, we need to identify the lake. I see a lake over there. It's a salt lake, but it's still a lake. Time on the clock is 24, so we're five minutes out from that little creek which pops out of the south end of the lake, which I can pretty well imagine being right about there on the nose. Before we climb up above 10,000 feet, we need to be on oxygen. I'm going to turn on the oxygen system and I'm going to get ourselves on oxygen mask. Cool. Some people use a uh, 
full of cannula. There we go, the microphone went off by itself, that's hilarious. I think there's a button on the uh, top of the microphone. That seems to be slightly skewed off to one side at the moment. Alright, so we're climbing out of uh, 10,000 feet. We've got QN8 set 1013, we're on oxygen, O2 is tested. And I'm going to go ahead and contact Brisbane Centre 133 decimal 2, asking for supply following. Uh, time was 2 0, current time is 3 0. Yep, we're just on the s south side of that lake now. Before we go ahead, I'm going to get my position. Actual time was 3 0. 17 minutes from 3 0 will be 47. Should be at the salt little mush thing. Lake Gregory is where we are at. Need to write this down. So it's X-ray Tango Zulu flight level 
one two zero uh, left Balgo Hill at time what's the current hour nine two zero tracking what's the place uh, Ginbata Ginbata Light level one two zero What's our uh, estimate at Gimbella? It's 123 minutes after, so 09, 10, 11, 20 would be th uh, 20, 40, 43. 11, 43. Brisbane Centre X ray Tango Zulu is a Lancer Legacy. Is uh, 11,500 on climb to flight level 120. Uh, so again, flight level 125. Uh, tracking from uh, Balgo Hill to Gin Bata. Depart of Balgo Hill, time 0920. Estimating Gin Bata at time 1143. And requesting flight following. Hello, Brisbane Santa. Can I go ahead with your request in 4340 for the squawk? I can't hear us. He's too far away. Dang it. Time it up both sides. X ray Tango Zulu for now. X ray Tango Zulu, okay. X ray Tango Zulu, so I didn't know if you copied my last. Uh, message, go ahead with your request. Squawk code is 4340. 4340. Squawk code 4340. Exo Tango Zulu. And we're uh, just requesting flight following uh, to again better. Flight level 125. Exo Tango Zulu, thanks identified. Uh, and the area QNH 1010, no reported traffic. Okay, QNH 1010, uh, I think it's a best on the flight level, so irrelevant. <laughs> uh, so every, what was it, 45 minutes or every 30 minutes? We'll make it 30 minutes, we need to make a report to them that we are still alive and still tracking our estimate for Ginbella. Yep, this is an oxygen master at uh, 12,500 feet in an unpressurized aircraft. That's just so you can hear kind of, you know, the microphone inside the mask. And so I can experience the discomfort of having something attached to my face. Yep, I'm on VATSIM, that's a uh, controller. I've actually called in to the controller, he has us identified on a scorecard. Basically we're flying over desert. Currently we're over the Tanami, actually we've passed the Tanami Desert, once we pass those uh, salt lakes. And we're now on the Great Sandy Desert, with the uh, Gisborne Desert just to our south. That waypoint, next waypoint after that is Dondi, Delta, Oscar, November, Delta, India, Dondi. Thanks, just confirm your estimate time, Dudlow. Just going to readjust our uh, mixture again. So again. Yeah. Your estimate time. We go to Richer and Peak. Dondi. There is Lena Peak, which we will leave it on. I'm going to stay just ever so slightly Lena Peak. That's coming back up to peak. All right, cool. There's Lena Peak. I think 1480 uh, is about right. Estimated time is 0938 for Budlow. That's actual peak right there. Oh, that's a higher peak than I thought it was. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, about right. Cool. I'll we'll stay there with the mixture. City, uh, 1484. Cheers. Identified. Cleared to Perth. Fired Budlow plan route. Climb flightable 380. <laughs> yeah, the southwest guys with the Oxford Moss sitting underneath the the nose. Compared to these, climbing flight level 380. Most important part of the uh, remask is your nose. Lachlan, send out a uh, thing on Discord. I have my Discord window closed at the moment. I guess I could open it up. There we go. I don't know how to send an invite. Oh, yes, I do. There we go. Invite people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it does change the sound, doesn't it, when you have the uh, O2 mask attached to your face? There it is. So I'm just tracking a link into chat. There's your Discord. Yes, you saw the DCS update. I've gone ahead and Pull the trigger on that, I'll play around with DCS, see if it's uh, worth doing anything other than just playing with. Might be. But yeah, there's a Discord, you can uh, jump into that link, enjoy. I don't use Discord very much, so don't expect to be talking to me much on there. Time 37. So 10 minutes out from that little salt flat. Hoping we see it. And we did call him on the half hour, so we're going to call him again on the hour. Zero zeros and three zeros for ATC. And Nullagaina River would be the next position that we report in. About 25 minutes out uh, from now. Don Inspector's in. Good to see you there. I'm going to go ahead and chuck that into a notepad so that I remember its existence. Cool, that's done. Cool. So how's everyone going today on this Friday? The day before Anzac Day, actually.
Hello, Kip. 4.41 in the morning. What are you doing awake now? Time is 41. What do you think? That's not a road. Is that a road or is that sand dunes? I think it's sand dunes. We are in the great sandy desert after all. How oh, the neck are done. About 12,000. What's the temperature to run outside? Temperature is 2 degrees Celsius. I'm going to stick the 2 on the 12. There's the 12. There's roughly 2 plus. And we're showing it about. Oh, I'm not getting too. We're getting like 215 knots out of this thing. Dang. I think that's all we're going to get as well. Let's uh, realign that to 15 or so. Actually, let's check the uh, 226. Yeah, let's go with 226. So that's the actual ground speed now. And we should be getting, what was it, 19 knots of wind. Might be able to pick up the wind on this as well. Uh, let's see how we can do that menu. That's uh, fields, isn't it? ETA is useful, but that's not particularly useful. Cross track off. needing the wind one. <laughs> Good old cats waking you up in the morning. Ground speed, GPS altitude, generic timer, LOT, track angle, track. Wind, that's what I wanted. Cool. We got 13 knots, mostly caught in crosswind, so I reckon we only have maybe a half of that. Maybe even less than half. About 6 knots of uh, tailwind. So it's only about 220 knots uh, in the, of uh, true airspeed, sorry. Not going to get much more than that. Let's stick with the 215. That'll adjust a few of these. Uh, so my original was at 17, 18, 19. So it's probably going to be a revised ETA of 49. Current time 44. You've got 18 stray cats. I have a handful of stray cats. I think it's uh, one mum cat plus at least three kids that I've seen. Now this is the second litter that I've seen um, in about two years, three years. I don't know where the other litter went. But the current litter is only about three, three cats. And go, uh, three, six, four. There we are, how are you Sitting on oxygen at 12,500 feet. Gotta love flying the 
Gibson Desert and the Great Sandy Desert. We're in the Great Sandy right now. Salt's Creek, there's Barker Hill, we're somewhere out here. Angola 364, just confirm you're talking about Charlie. Uh, Roger, I just I put my head right up on the top. I I'd imagine I'd nearly top out on the uh, on the thing. Hard to tell, really. There should be. Is that the depression there? Relax back in the seat a bit. Estimating uh, Gingen 25 past the next hour. No, two hours time. My golly, massive. Hey, Gola, three, six, I'm having a, having a real hard time trying to find you here. Uh, that why while I try to figure something out. Uh, okay, no worries. Chuck that in. So we did pretty much pass that on time at 0930. I will pack, pop in 0920 because that's the time at the left. Just confirm your current score code. Uh, current score code is 0223. So put that in bold. Uh, 47 should be about now. I reckon that might be, well this is certainly discoloration in the desert isn't it? Everything else is sand and that's this kind of rocky, gooey thing. So I'll assume that that is what we were looking for. Next position is the Nolligan River Lake thing. So that's 26 minutes in front of the current time, which is 48. And goal of 36. Well, I got you just verify your level, please. Yeah, I'll call uh, 48. And goal of 36. Oh, thanks. No oh, there it is. Look at that. We're right over it. One final request. Is it possible to take on a speed up uh, the flight simulation? Yeah, that's us, uh, What flyers do you need? Uh, times four if possible, flight in the time two. So the current time, 49, Probably we'll call it. Between flight level three and flight level three, six zero. Zero nine, 49, the next one is 25 minutes into the future. So we're 49 plus 26. Minus 60, 15. Ten, fifteen. That'll be the 45 minute from the initial call. I'll give them a call right there. That'll work. Velocity 1484, contact Melbourne oh. Centre 127, base from all zero, okay. Uh, there is some gold mining out in the Aussie outback, but not out here. This is a great sandy desert. There's nothing much happening out here. Yep. Once upon a time, the British came out here and were firing off rockets. Not the big nukes, just generally rocket testing and figuring out ballistic missiles and that kind of stuff. That was the 1950s and 60s. Other than that, not much really. Oh yeah, that's right, the Canning stock route comes through here, a um, little bit further south of us, maybe 50 miles south of here, there's a thing called the Canning stock route that was uh, designed in 1910 as a way to get cattle and horses um, up from 
kind of down south near Perth, up towards, um, well initially Halls Creek, from Halls Creek they could uh, walk up into the Kimberleys, but Halls, like the Kimberleys is easy to walk around, it's this big chunk of desert that's really hard to get through. And of course back then they wanted to move initially cattle up into uh, the port of Wyndham and from Wyndham they would go to the meatworks and then be shipped off as pieces of beef um, to places like Indonesia and Singapore, Japan, all that kind of stuff in about 1910. So they um, surveyed the route in 1910 and then in 1911 the next year they made the first push of just horses no cattle uh, between Perth and um, it wasn't Perth actually it was Waluna which is well north of Perth but there was a bunch of horses that were being grazed in Waluna and in kind of the early part of the 20th century before World War One or well, just in, into World War One, uh, the area around the Kimberley had a shortage of horses because uh, all the horses were dying and they didn't know why. Turns out that all the horses were eating a particularly yellow flower which is poisonous to horses. Uh, anyway, they had problems with uh, getting enough horses up in the Kimberley. So from Waluna, they sent an entire like herds and herds of uh, horses. Um, about four of them in... Uh, 2011, so again 1911, and uh, I think on the very first expedition it was three men driving something like 80 horses, and something like 30% of the horses made it all the way and the rest of them died on the track, and the second group was another group of three men driving about 50 horses, and all the three men got murdered by Aborigines on way. So the next group that came on were police, and uh, the police didn't capture any Aborigines. Instead, they just shot ten of them. That's how justice was done in 1911. Some Aborigines murdered some men, so we murdered some Aborigines. <laughs> so that's how that worked out. Uh, 2012 was, uh, so again, 1912 was the very first uh, group of uh, beef that came through the area. And most of the beef made it all the way through. And in fact, there were even heartier beef by the time they made it up to Halls Creek. So the second group of uh, beef drovers came through and they found that all of the wells had been, well, not all of them, but a good... 50%, even more than 50% of the wells had been uh, essentially damaged by the Aborigines. And uh, after that they kind of couldn't push cattle through anymore because there wasn't enough water. So one of the surveyors came through late, uh, like in the 19, like after the war, in the 20s. And they figured out that the Aborigines were um, destroying the wells because they couldn't get water out of them and they were trying. So they'd go up to the wells and they'd try and lift water out of the well but because the well was a vertical shaft with a big heavy metal bucket on the end of it uh, you'd need essentially horses and five or six men and a machine and a crankshaft and all these little technological devices to get water out of the well. And the Aborigines, of course, would be trying to, you know, one man with his arms to pull this massive bucket out of the, the well. He wouldn't be able to do it. And, uh, in fact, quite a lot of the Aborigines possibly either died or got seriously injured trying to get water out of these wells. So, they figured out this water well thing must be a trap for Aborigines. And so they just destroyed the things. So, oh, that's, a, that's an Aborigine man trap. <laughs> is designed to kill us. <laughs> Great, we'll destroy it. And uh, a surveyor came through and saw some of the Aborigines using one or two of the wells, kind of, and he figured that if they redesigned the wells so, they, so that the Aborigines could actually get water out of it without, you know, getting seriously injured, that they wouldn't destroy these wells on the route. 
So they redesigned all the wells and then they kept on using the canning stock route uh, up until the 1960s and the last uh, stock route of the, I think 1960 itself, um, the last stock droving through the canning stock route. It then became disused for quite a number of decades until the 1980s when the when some crazy New Zealander, an actual New Zealander from New Zealand, decided that he wanted to walk the Canning Stock Track because it is the most remote road in Australia and it passes the single most um, remote township in Australia, which is an Aboriginal township. So the most remote town in Australia is Kirukara, K-I-W-I-R-R-K-U-R-R-A, Kirukara. Uh, there is no sectors currently extending. There's a map, it's just in the Gisborne Desert side of the, uh, of the track here. And although there it is, situated in the desert, it's in a low-lying area, so it actually gets flooded every few years. Every large major um, cyclone comes through. The township of Kirikara tends to get flooded. And, uh, yes. We are talking about a place that looks like this. Desert, sand, and the odd flood. So that's the bit of land that we are currently flying over right now. I just got disconnected from the network at random. That's unfortunate. You'll jump back on. Cool, we're back in. As you can see, there's no airports out here in the desert. So if we did have to land, it wouldn't be a pleasant experience at all. The location that we're flying along right now doesn't even have any roads. So we're about, as I said, maybe 50. So we're actually diverging off the Canning Stock Route. So the Canning Stock Route heads much, much further south than we are. And we're getting further and further away from the nearest, most remote road in Australia. And by most remote, it means there's nothing else near it. So we need to fly pretty much all the way through to that little gorge that I showed you before. Until we find something resembling civilization. And that's a good... How far are we at the moment? That's a good uh, 250, 260 nautical miles of desert between us and the nearest river. Hi there, Rossi. We're at 12,500 feet, so we need to be on oxygen according to the law. Hence, wearing an oxygen mask, and we have this thing running. Oxygen is required, we've got the oxygen tank on, that'll slowly make its way down. I think we have four hours in the oxygen tank. And that's full. So when we get down to about 40%, then we'll need to worry about descending. But for now, I'll be... I was just talking about the story of the uh, canning stock route which was uh, first surveyed as a route in, the in 1910 and uh, first driven up with the horses in 1911. So yeah, good story about the Canning Stock Route. Is, it is one of the more unusual parts of Australia. Um, I believe there was a, yeah, as I said, a New Zealander walked the track on foot carrying a little cart made out of um, bicycle wheels and uh, like bamboo, a little cart to carry all of his water and supplies and food and stuff. Uh, he did fail at his first three or four attempts and had to be rescued a couple of times by helicopter, by light aircraft. And then finally, after his fifth or sixth attempt, he actually walked the entire distance and it took him three and a half months. So he can walk the entire canning stock route 
in about three and a half to four months. Tiger Air's probably gone forever. Um, I doubt that Wellington will show up because it's not part of the event. No, nope, I'm going to go from Auckland. As much as I love the scenery at Wellington, it'll be an Auckland flight for me. I'm thinking Airbus A320 Air New Zealand. Possibly Jetstar. I might do the Jetstar. I would fly the A321 because of the A cars. That's an option as well. It's a very attractive option. Tiger's great. <laughs> Hello, Sean. No, I shouldn't be nice to you. We're all isolated at home now, aren't we? Good old coronavirus. Good old happy gas. I uh, just O2. Next day in the New Zealand 321. I think I might do Jetstar 321. Well, the New Zealand delivery might be a good idea. They fly the Neo instead of the real, the normal 321. However, let's go and check New Zealand. FS Labs, 3, 2, 1, see what pops up there. ZKOJM, nah. Yep, good old Dorkland to Sydney. I see a repaint request for it, I don't see the actual thing. It's a matter of being on the Jetstar. Well, someone made a request on January the 17th and it looks like it was never completed. Oh well. Just the good old air <laughs> through my mask at the moment. Not even 100% O2. It's got old 70% nitrogen, 20% oxygen, and another percent of whatever else is in the oxygen in the atmosphere these days. Yeah, that's the only thing it's done, is uh, solve climate change by destroying the economy. Good work. I might be doing something for the dawn service. I weren't allowed to go anywhere, so I might go outside my house and play myself a trumpet. What was the time on that 15 minutes? I can see that little river. Is it called the Nullagain River? Or as I was calling it before, the Salt River, because it's just a salt flat in the shape of a river. Occasionally there is flooding in this area, as I told you with that little township down, the, down there. You get big wet season pushes every once in a while. And that will flood into that river, and which turns into essentially a big channel going out to the sea. And eventually it settles down and kind of stagnates into pools, which then just evaporate off, leaving whatever happens to be there, mostly salt at the bottom.
We're getting some of those clouds that we're talking about. Unfortunately, we haven't run into any yet, but that one there is actually under us. Some of them above us, some of them under us. Never a great sign, but we continue on. 225 knots. We've got the uh, manifold pressure as far forward as it can go at this altitude. O2 is going strong. RPM is nice and uh, yep, EGT is nice and level. Outside air temperature 3 degrees Celsius, which is nice and cold. On the surface, it'll be above 35, which would be horrible. So the position that we selected was actually these lakes, wasn't it? So when we're directly over them, right in that corner there, that is our time. And that should be in seven minutes from now. We might be going quicker than we expected, which would be wonderful news. I'm going to uh, check this out. So our estimated ground speed is 225, which is pretty much what the GPS is showing right now. Ah, oh, we have it accelerated. It was 225, now it's 229. This could only be good news. Was that airspeed that increased? I think it... Yeah, yeah it is. It's 220 knots now. We'll see how we go with the crossing. I think we might be a little early. So the Nolagain River. Which is, as you can see, a bunch of uh, kind of disassociated salt flats. Oh, those lakes. That is a, yeah, that's definitely a lake there. I'm dry at the moment. It is the dry season. And that's literally the lake that was selected to uh, cross on the next waypoint. What's after that? After the Nulla is the Nulla head south. Okay then. So that little chain of salt lakes will at some point in the future sharply veer off to the south and we'll lose sight of it forever. But we're not, um, oh, we are accelerating. We've accelerated to 230 knots. Look at that. That's exciting. Let's tuck in a new speed for the rest. I knew this aircraft had that in it. 2.15 up to here and then 2.30. Just started randomly accelerating. Haven't even touched anything on the controls. Might have been the air temperature. Or might have been our weight. Maybe it was slightly too heavy and now we've burnt off some fuel. 
Uh, the aircraft's going to settle into its angle of attack properly and it's accelerating in. Oh no, false alarm. Just a random updraft and it accelerated us as we were descending through the uh, air layer. Coming back to about 225. Might even drop down to 220. Yeah, it's 220. Ten under. That's fine for now. This ETA hasn't changed much. Still at 324. Still looks to be 220. Um, ATC dropped us, so uh, VFR. Time 12, 15, yeah, we're going to be over that. Just play tricks on it because you can see so far when you're up this high. I was looking at uh, YouTube and apparently someone was landing at the well. So there is a location just um, down here called, I think it's a well 45, something like that. In here. There it is. Well 43. That's on the Cadding stop route, which you can see just passing down south. It's not a road. If you remove the uh, Google overlay, it would just be sand. But yeah, there is a well there. Well number 43. Billawaggy. in amongst the sand dunes. There's the Nullagoo River and we are right here right now. So apparently at well 43 there's a very small tiny uh, landing strip. We can land our Cessna 172 down there. Okay. Well, 30 or 33, there is only it. There it is, 33. Pop that over. So there we go. Landing at well 33 at the Great Sandy Desert. So on the main screen <laughs> is a simulator and over there is what it sort of looks like in the real world. Now Bilawagi is the name of World 43. Uh, I guess the Aborigines named it I can't even get anything on there about it, really, apart from the fact that it exists. Um, 
Aboriginal Tribes of Australia. There's a little research paper here in a PDF file I'm going to download. Well, there's one map for the name. Oh, there we go. So all the Aborigines have their own name for all these wells. Well 13 is Al Burumal. We don't know where they get these names from, but there you go. on the ground, yes he is. So uh, there's a little uh, airfield at uh, World 33. There's the gable markers that mark the beginning of the runway. Yeah, it's pretty much any any dirt landing strip. Nothing particularly special about it, apart from the fact it might be one of the most remote places you could ever land a Cessna. Oh, look at that, Wolf Creek Meteor has its own name. Ken Mallow. We didn't do the math for our next bit. We did cross it at the correct time, I think. We'll assume we did. Next one is 13 minutes away. Uh, let's double check that speed. Yeah, still got 225. Looks good to me. It's drifting up and down a bit because we're on the ragged edge of performance. So I've got 13 minutes out, which will be 20, 28, of course. Ten twenty-eight. Count time nineteen. So what is the next one? It will be where it heads south. That's cool. And one of that is Lake Dora. Another thirteen out from twenty-eight. Forty-one. Yeah, 134 on the ground speed, 125. How does that show up here? Mm. What are we getting? Six knots.
as that big southbound bend that we're talking about. Time 28, write that down now. Count time 21. So when you check a uh, Nolagain River into Google, it comes up with this crazy idea. Go again. There's meant to be a silent G after the end. They didn't record it. The meaning of the word is not known. Uh, Gin Banter is. Uh, the mine site called Roy Hill. It's a little bit off the road there. Uh, you need to go in a little bit further in off the uh, track. But it is a mine site. They do iron ore mining at Gin Banta or Gin Banta. I think it's a J, not a G. Um, so Roy Hill uh, was a essentially cattle driving yard owned by. Uh, Mr. Hancock back in the 70s and 80s and the story that they tell which is completely false but anyway <laughs> the story that they tell on the radio is that Mr. Hancock was flying his Cessna 182 around the, the ranch at Roy Hill when he crashed the Cessna and in so doing uh, the, the landing gear of the Cessna ripped up a bit of the ground and underneath the ground was some loose iron ore at which point he applied for a uh, mining license in his uh, area and uh, started his mine site uh, the suggestion is that he actually purchased that land because he knew it had iron ore in it and then found it <laughs> after the fact even though he purchased it with it with that specifically in mind to mine the site so depends on if you uh, go with the you know historical setting of when he applied for the mining site and when he owned, owned the property and then when he actually went to the property the first time and did prospecting for iron ore knowing that there's iron there yeah anyway Mr. Hancock had several children and one of them is now known as Gina Reinhardt's Georgina Reinhardt. Ah. I'm not even in my own area. There we go.
So how do I create motivators in, in this thing? Does anyone know how to do that? Creating motivators in here? Profile, user volume, mute, disable. <laughs> I think I'll do that. Kill. So, to give back membership, I um, I do a Google search for how to uh, do that, don't I? That's how you do it. Open up the server settings tab. Server settings tab, where the heck is that then? Alright, it's a drop down thing. Server settings, members. There we go. Nope. Cool. I watch a video about it. That's, uh, not right. Okay, that's like five levels deep and you have to type something. That's weird.
So I think I'm up to there. Time was going to be 28, current time 31. I think, yep, we've already passed it. That's the southbound thing, and that is Lake Dora coming up. Let's do the map for Lake Dora. It was 41, current time 31, we're 10 minutes out. After that is the uh, Conwine River, 24 minutes out from 41. Sixty-five, which will be eleven oh five. I'll go ahead and call that time forty uh, twenty-eight. Yep. Still hanging on to the uh, flight plan. There you go, Rockin. Enjoy that. Well, I had a ban. There you go. So anyway, with that little bit of excitement done, let's go back to flight plans. Got 41 to get to that lake. About four, six minutes, seven minutes. Got Lake Dora the Explorer. So the lake is that shape, with north to the top of the page. Yep, I can see that kind of weird bit jutting out, and this very distinctive kind of wedge shape at the top of it. And even that little tiny extra bit of lake on the top. It is a salt lake, Lake Dora. Okay, so according to this, uh, the Great Sandy Desert is where we are, on the south side of the lake, over there, the south side of that, is the uh, Gibson Desert. So the border of the uh, Great Sandy and the Gibson Deserts is essentially that river up to the lake, 
and everything west of the lake is a great sandy desert and between like we've been flying over the great sandy for a while but if we had been on the south side of that that bendy rivery salt lake thing we would have been in uh, the Gibson desert right in the middle looking good time 36 Hi there Gabe, in Australia you need to be on oxygen, 100% above 10,000 feet. We're currently at flight level 125 in a non-pressurised aircraft. I picked up this oxygen mask quite a fair few years ago actually, and I haven't used it since the first day I used it, so I thought we might as well cosplay with it and have a listen to it through the uh, radio as well. Make a couple of transmissions on that sim with it. Once we do pass below 10,000 feet again, we'll take it off again and hang around on the descent. But for now, until we're well clear of this desert, we're at 12,000 feet. Not attached to anything, and it is open at the bottom, so I'm just breathing normal air. There's apparently a little Aborigine uh, locality township of whatever you might want to call it right here. In fact, you can see the little dirt road going to it. That township is called Punyumu or Punmu, P-U-N-M-U. So I'm just having a look at now. The Punyu community. There we go. And there's their wonderful little lake in their website. 1,310 kilometers northeast of Perth in the Arundel River National Park. One of the most remote communities in Australia but it is not the most remote which we talked about near well uh, 42 or whatever it was. Township is located on the eastern edge of Lake Doa big salt lake. Ideal stopover for travellers touring the Canning Stock Route, which is the route that we're kind of diverging from not that much to be honest, it's just over there. So we're still sitting on the Canning Stock Route. In fact there is... no oh no that's just the thing, but the township Pomu is uh, right there with the road going straight through it. So there's the Canning, uh, the Canning Stock Route. If we were to have an engine failure right now, we'd probably try to land on that route and uh, wait for the next truck to come past, which will probably be in about, well, you know, a few months. Now, the lads aren't flying today. Apparently, my route is too long for them. And their Cessnas would get left behind by this uh, Lancia Legacy in its uh, 120-ish knots. Which has unfortunately dropped back down to 115. Current time 4-0. About three uh, minutes out. From... What's it called? Lake Dora. In fact, we're at Lake Dora now. Uh, the position I put for Lake Dora was once we become even with that. So I, I suggested that this kind of thing made a, a straight line through the lake. So once that's a straight line off our wing, that's our waypoint. And the waypoint is in two minutes from now. 
Yeah, I was about to say uh, a week or two, but then I realised we're in coronavirus lockdown and nobody's allowed to drive around these parts of Western Australia at the moment. So yeah, until coronavirus is finished, and we're not lock no longer in lockdown, um, these Aboriginal communities are literally isolated. You can't get in or out of these places. So yeah, essentially crashing onto that lake. Nobody's coming to rescue you. You're on your own. It's possible that some of the Aborigine people might come out to have a look. Or maybe not. <laughs> Up to them. That there is Telfer Mine. T-E-L-F-E-R. That's a large mine site. You can see this big circular thing with a bit of water at the bottom. Uh, essentially there's an open cut mine that occasionally gets flooded. T-E-L-F-E-R by Newcrest Mining. Uh, this is a gold mine. So I think the toilet was asking about gold mines. We have just stumbled across our first gold mine on this trip. Welcome to the Western Australia Gold Mines. Telfer is a uh, copper mine and a golf, uh, gold mine. Uh, in 2008-2009 apparently it produced 629,000 ounces of gold. And Lachlan's apparently a moonier climb at Telfer, so if you aren't taking off now, I'm going to get past her again, because that's the mine site. Kind of recognise the big round circle. Just popping it up here on Google. Google Maps, we can see that big circular thing with a lake right in the middle of it. There's the rest of the mine, mining out some gold. And there's the airport, and little township around the airport. Uh, that's a FIFO site, you can get a um, 737, I'm told, into that, as well as the Fokker 100, 717. Guessing that's the runway outline here somewhere. Very remote location out here in the desert. And the salt lake behind us. Mine side over there.
What's our speed? 220, 232 on the ground speed. Tucked in 1105, time 46 now. Here we are at uh, Telfer Mine, straight down the set line of the runway. Formation of Moonies, funny stuff. Apparently that's what uh, Telfer Mine looks like if you're flying directly over it. I can see it's the same site. Uh, it's a default-ish airport by the looks of it. No OZX here, it's just the old FTX. But yeah, we got the mine site. Alright there. Oh there we go, concrete's coming through now. Oh there they are. If you zoom in, it's our little Mooney friends taking off. Man, that's hard to, hard to control the camera with that, that much to zoom in. There they are. Cool. We'll uh, pop over into the CTAFs, frequency 126.7. And I think we need a new map. Fitzroy, that's Telfer, 126, is that 85? I think it is. Telfer, 126.65, alright, I'll get into that. Telfer Unicorn. Yes, I'm in control airspace. There they are. That's fine, you don't have to contact anyone. Yeah. You just have to monitor, so change frequency to 1270. Bye bye. And Jin Banter is 12705. Was it 12705? Hey, hello everyone. Good day, Trent. Yes, I will be doing FNO tomorrow. Uh, we're going down to Miami and the Mad Dog from Atlanta. You think you're so fast, yet we can go 230 knots as well. But can you do it for two and a half hours? <laughs> Mooney power, sure we can. Yeah, you probably could. Hashtag Mooney gang. So apparently, uh, Alliance Airlines flies to Telfer direct from Melbourne, Essendon. Is it one two seven zero? Yes. Zero five. Zero five. If you're talking about uh, Gimbala. Fantastic. Oh, not fantastic. Um, the pilots is two seven zero. Mister Five, I think. Looking at the. Um, Ursa now. CTF 127.05. Oh, CTF. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is Ginbana, so it's still 128 miles away from Tofa. Thank you. 
I want to see if they're still flying that flight. Probably not. But it might be on the uh, Google search. Uh, Y-M-E-N to Y-T-E-F. Uh, flight away. Right, so I'm at the back. I am now Mooney 3. Mooney Leader, do you have visual on the fast boy? Negatives, I do not have eyes on the subject. This is Mooney 1 to Mooney 2. You mean Mooney 3? Moon, where? Mooney 1, Mooney 2 and Mooney Stall. Which one's which? Well, we, ch we changed, because now Mooney... Um, Mooney stall didn't stall, and I'm at the back, so I'm now Mooney 3. You need to do something or other. Okay, Mooney 3 to Mooney 1, no, I don't have eyes on the subject. You stuffed it up again, it's Mooney 3. How oh, far are we? I heard that. 100 other bars, we'll probably Mooney descend out to what, 8,500? That means you're you talking to yourself. <laughs> I'm Mooney 1. And you're not going to change that. Thank you, Ralph. Seems it's confusing. Let's just it's go. Third Mooney one down. One, I'm Mooney two, and your UQF are Mooney stall. Yep. Three knots. Hmm. It'll make it take longer. Trent, you want to take any guesses as to why QF is Mooney stall? No idea, maybe because he pulled out too hard. Uh, well, I accidentally put something that blocked my view and I screened it. Another mine side up there. Big chunky hole in the ground. Uh, next thing was sea wine at uh, 11.05, 10 minutes out. So we should see a river crossing our position in about 10 minutes. Mooney stall, this is Mooney 2, I'm about to overtake you, please go faster. Mm. <laughs> this is the transit lane. After we cross the next position, we might even descend down to... Hmm. Oh, there it is. Just go early. 10.5. What altitude are we going to be at? Yeah. Seven minutes, and then six minutes. Listen. Yeah. Uh, Mooney 3 to Mooney 2. I'll stick with it until we get to C1 anyway. Be interesting to see what we can do with uh, 10,500. Carl 02. BRB yeah, gonna buy myself an oxygen mask from eBay. <laughs> and the wind. Pick it up from here. Will be uh, two, uh, zero, two, zero at three knots, I think. Four knots. There it is. I've got the QS prop from the two? things come up on my screen. It's zero two. That's a <laughs> massive change. Oh no. G1000. It's gone. It's fine. I didn't stall. It slows us down quite a bit. Not really a fan. Well, it's only two minutes. Pretty short legs after that, isn't it? Where did we get that 07 from? Seems like a mistake. It is. That's be 02. 020 at 3. That's that position there. Should be 020.
Doesn't change too much because it's only three knots. Fork 10. Ah, I've got 10,000 feet. I'm putting in the 7,000 feet positions. So it should be 0, 4, 0 at. Still it's 2. It's only 2 knots down there. That's horrendously so wind. Don't like it. Very nice. Tiny include at 11,000 feet. Yeah, we'll do it. The 80th is now occluded. <laughs> what are 12,000 feet up until fork in the river? So five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, uh, that can work. 11.13. What are you guys cruising at? Like what speed? It's a fork and rear. Yeah. 2.30 knots. Once we have rivers, it's probably a little more comfortable to get closer to the ground. So it's better to glide close to a river. Because at least at the river, there might be fish and water. And you can probably survive a bit longer. Out there in the great sandy desert where the uh, temperature is something like 40 degrees Celsius, there's not a single drop of water in sight. It's not the place to be. Anyone, have you climbed out of 10,000? I'm at 11,000 right now. Okay, time for me to go up to 11,000. I think we were at 11,000 like 30 seconds ago, so I went up to 11,000. I was at 11,000 because my autopilot didn't want to work, and now I've got it working. Yeah, well, my autopilot put me in a 20 degree dive. Mine put me in a 30 degree climb. What time are we getting there? 24. Okay, not too bad. 24 minutes out. If we uh, drop the speed a little bit, we'll only add about 4 minutes. We get there about 28, 29, half past, half past 9. We'll be off the O2. You said to me. Don't see it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll drop it. 10,500 miles behind me when you were doing the And come off the O2. I was doing 2.30 knots. We were there for about 15, 15 minutes before we dropped down again. Uh, I might even drop it down. 8.500. And we'll Many yeah, stall, two knots. I do not see you. So I use those numbers. 13 plus 7 is 20. 20 plus 5 is 25. And 29. Oh, now I see you, Mr. Mooney Stall. Um, you're behind me on my screen. Cool. So the reason for the mask has been explained a few times, you need to be on oxygen yes, in Australia if you're above 10,000 um, feet. From my position, it is a legal requirement, and we're simulating well, that whole thing. Well, you are descending, 
And you are going more to the left. You're just about could to you survive without oxygen at 12,000 feet? Stabilizer. Yeah, you probably could. Apart from, you know, CASA coming at you. Anyway, the plan is to uh, stay at 12,000 feet till we cross the river. We cross the river at time 43, current time... What time was it? 05, sorry, time 05, current time is 01, we've got 4 minutes and we'll start our descent down to 10. Mooney 2, this is Mooney no, I'm Mooney 2. Mooney Stall, this is Mooney 2. What is your speed currently? <laughs> this is Casa, up and out. Copy, I'm doing 222 two, two knots. It's going to head into 223 two, very shortly. Mooney no 1, two, what is it. your speed currently? Mooney 1, Mooney 2. Uh, Mooney Stall. Doing 100, 196, indicated. Well, we're behind you and need to catch up, so. What's the name of this river again? The yes, Terrawan. Yes, uh, Terrawan Gorge coming up. Just south of Marble Bar. Marble Bar is uh, famous for being Australia's hottest town. It is, um, on average, the hottest temperature all the time. So the Carawine Gorge and the Oak Over River. It's a really good looking bit of uh, river here. There it is, Caroline Gorge at the uh, Akan River. That's what we're looking for. I'm in the That's our next point. Mooney 1, this is Mooney 2. Um, I see you. Here's a rubber. Well, those clouds are getting a bit low though. You're in front of my white wing. Which is the another good reason to start descending, because right some of those clouds are below us. I've gone nav mode, so I am on the um, track. If the cloud obscures the horizon, that means it is passing through your altitude. Oh, this mask is some just random thing I picked up on eBay many years ago. For about five dollars can't quite see it but I reckon I saw something blue up ahead don't know it's on the GPS anyway I hope they didn't uh, completely remove the Carowine River here Caro Wine. I know it sounds like I'm saying Caro Line with an L, but it's Caro Wine with a W. Uh, I'm um, I've got Trenton Start off my left wing. Ah. I've picked up a tag along somewhere. Must be slightly behind us. Yeah, it's 1,500 below us. What, uh, um, what frequency should we be on? Uh, Telfer, center, Telfer, Telfer. Woody Woody and Nifty. We're well south of there. That was that other mine site we saw was a Nifty. There's Telfer, there's Nifty and Woody Woody. 
Christmas Creek and our destination Gin Bella. So itself is all on the same sea taff including Nifty and Woody Woody and everything in that area is on the sea taff 119.9 but we're not flying into that area we're down here next to Newman which is 1220 and Gin Bella 112705 Ah, Jim Bella's its own area. West Angeles also 127.05. Cool. Alright. Uh, I know where we are now. Uh, no, Mini 1 to Mini Squad. Um, IFR is foggy. I'm going to be descending to 9,000. Time 07. We'll start the descent now. We're in the clouds. <laughs> Many stall, this is many too. Bye bye, I've just sailed past you. Well, not sailed, we're not in a boat, but you get the memo. And we'll start reducing that power a little, and we will need to increase our um, mixture. We'll go slightly richer peak for the moment, and we'll settle into the peak again. So our uh, speed 141. It's an advantage to continue that speed. But I think we'll just uh, reduce our descent rate a little. 500 a minute. Keep the ears from popping too much. Make sure you open up your esophagus tubes. Because it will be quite a lot of pressure change as we come down. The slower we make the, the uh, descent, the better it is for our ears. Five hundred is about the limit that I'd want to be at, maybe even less than that. Every two to three hundred feet you really feel it. Once we get off the O2 mask I'm very keen on uh, getting some water into me. So it's been a rather dry and warm sunny trip. I know it's only been three degrees of uh, air temperature outside but it does warm up inside the, uh, the big canopy here. Outside air temperatures increased 3 degrees in the last 1,000 feet. Rivers missing from the scenery. That's a grand pity. It would have been a nice thing to see. It's apparently quite a very interesting river, that one. Um, not as deep gorges as uh, Catherine River, but you can see one side of the river is a massive cliff. So on one side you have that big cliff, then you've got the river, and then on the other side you've got the sand dunes of the Great Sandy Desert. Okay, so we've passed the river, the next one will be the fork in the river. So we're going to fly along and there'll be a fork in the river. That time will be 2-0, current time 1-0, so it's 10 minutes ahead. Yep, Switching over to the other frequency, 12705. What weather do we have in Ginbata? Y-G-I-N Meta.
Mooney 2 to Mooney Flight Tower Com. I think we'll pick up Newman weather since uh, Jim Bella's not producing any uh, ADIS or anything. So it's NWM. Ten thousand five, we can come off O two. Second N W N. Q and H one zero one five. Mooney to Mooney flight, how do you go here? 5 by 5 Mooney Stall says he has dyslexia apparently through the chat. I assume that's a joke, but he will be here shortly. Okay, standard at atmosphere. Yeah. It's quite thin up here, yeah, and we right. probably need to descend to get around that cloud. Have you fixed your dyslexia? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to go heading. And heading. Mooney 2 to Mooney 1, I'm currently overtaking you, so I'm going to back off right now. Uh, Mooney 1 to Mooney 2, yes, sir. we have you off our left wing, so that's the pictures, that's gone direct to the blog. Okay, yes. at uh, Jin Bada 23, current I siren 14, and we're 10 minutes out. Just to start all the way down to the You're fine on my Sound. I think it's a problem and with the wind is having two a lot right zero. now. Alright. Jim, better runway 270. You're a bit quiet before, but you're right now. We'll do the full circuit all the way around it. I think Trent just has his um, volume a lot down. If that's English, which uh, no, it isn't. I have my volume at a reasonable plus 10, but every, and it always goes quiet for a bit, and then I put it up, and then all I hear is a voice like this, Jetstar 321 is requesting service to Melbourne. Do you ever get a problem where it goes from like really quiet to like extremely loud? That's what I was just making. I haven't had it in a while. The time 23 is the estimate. I have it time in the last 15. Um, flight. Currently at 30 miles out. It was, miles. it was bad enough. It was bad enough that that the was the kid who kept uh, asking for taxi. <laughs> Jim Bella Traffic X-Ray Tinga is a Lexi at uh, 8,500 on descent into Jim Bella at 30 miles. We estimate entering the circuit Jim Bella time 23 and runway 27. We'll go on the dead time for the full circuit at uh, Jim Bella. I assume that means that we're nearly there. So. Mooney 2 to Mooney 1, do you want us to join up behind you now or are we right at our current distances? 
Jared, we actually need to be on this frequency now. Okay. Uh, we'll Technically, we need to be on it. In, uh, um, 10 minutes. Uh, miles. 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 Uh, because it's going to be utter chaos if we all land at the same time, or it would be in real life. But how about we land where we both escort one down, and then we fly a circuit, escort another one down, and then the last one lands. That is a great idea. Yes, we're doing that. So Jin Bather is a okay, airport Mooney which Stall, was uh, built it's in the year It's eminent that you're not good at flying at low altitudes. You better land first. And it services the <laughs> Roy Hill mining site. Yeah, 2013 was when the airport opened. Um, let's keep it numerical actually. So Mooney Stall, then it'll be me, and then it'll be Mooney One. And it is the mine site owned by Jean Reinhardt, okay. Australia's richest woman. Final quick I like how according to the G1000, it's telling me I'm in the red, slow down you idiot, but the fin is telling me that I'm not over speeding. So the second entry hub is 2400 and dead side entry is 2900. And the minimum altitude was 4,100, so I'll make it 4,005, that clears us over the hills. Awkward laughter. And we'll go ha, down ha, the last ha, ha, ha. bit on air brake if we need it. Apparently, according to Discord, the newest member of the Musical Aviator Discord server is the Brazilian plane manufacturing company Embraer. Yeah, but there's a pretty new runway, 2013. Uh, it's a new one, it's a new flight. Uh, we're descending to 79,000 Before the uh, airport went in, they all used to fly to Newman and then yeah, bust it up. Now the other weird thing is the word Jinbata, G-I-N-B-A-T-A, is not an Aborigine name and it has nothing in relation to anything in this area. So, I was looking Looking it up on Google and YouTube and everything, the only thing I found with a similar name to Jinbada is a Jinbada in Ethiopia, which isn't this one, clearly. Um, that said, Gina Reinhardt did once make a randomly disparaging comment about Africans in Ethiopia, saying that she wished she could employ many Australian two, many miners one. I have lost on the ways on of you. Ethiopians. Um, I'm not sure Where if that's about why they are you better. in Probably relation not. to me? If you can see me. The other option is uh, G I N Bat A. Look forward and over your nose. I am. I see no lights. Print time ten miles. Aren't we? Surely not. Fifteen. There are no lights on my screen. Compulsory call to, made it, to be made at 10 miles with the uh, estimate on the circuit, which is still 23. What altitude are you at? I'm very much looking forward to 2020. I'm at 7,100. So much nicer. If I let it pitch down, I should be able to see you. Look off your right wing. Oh, there you are. That's not forward and over my nose. It was 30 seconds ago. Aircraft. And in better traffic, flying at Mooney, flight of three is 1 1 miles to the east. We'll make a dead side and circuit to land on runway 27, expected circuit time 27. Ah, good, they're fine, that's fine, that's four minutes. Why do I hear overspeed warning? Um... I certainly will buy the new SIM. I hear it, it when the QS transmits, but then again you heard it, so it might be your plane. No, 
I think it's uh, Gina's name with a bat in the middle. Why Gina would make a bat in the middle of a name as an airport, who knows. Traffic Jin Baba, X-ray Tango Zulu, Planter Legacy at uh, 4,500 on descent down to uh, 2,900 on the dead side of the field. Joining the circuit from 10 miles and estimate circuit time is 2-3. Once a mini flight, um, I'm going to do a right hand 360 with basically. Right. John C, you're getting. Hang on. You would be amazed if you just saw what I did. <laughs> oh my god. How close are you right now? Did you see what I did? <laughs> Okay, this is the dead side of the field. We're actually going into the runway. Okay, if you manage yourself on that, but um, go, look, go to like the third go to the person full field, look at around. my plane, Victor Golf Fox Shot. Descending at this side of the circuit down to 2400. How'd you get in front of me? Just, just move that out of the way from there. Because I was going fast and then you made a right turn. And they'll turn it over to the cement to 1015. Four coming up. Okay, prop fully forward, mixed to fully rich. We'll take the gear on the downward. Right circuit right now. That would be a mini one. Jin better traffic S3 Tango Zulu is at uh, 2400 on the dead side of the circuit. We'll be joining from midfield down. Light directors off. <laughs> Tall inspector just uh, did the big throw par of looking up Gina Reinhardt on Google. I'm very I sorry for having led, led you there. And then I did that awesome stunt, but I think counselling can be discussed. Can be uh, said by a phone now these days. I'm just so flying just, uh, off because I'm mad. I don't know what uh, the phone number for Beyond Blue is in New Zealand, but. Uh, you can look that up next. And also because the autopilot says go this way and I don't want to go this way but it won't let me turn it off. There we are. Into the down. Next to fully rich. Almost ready. Into the white zone for the flat deployment. Traffic gin about a X-ray tank of Zulu turning and downwind one way two seven. Landing it coming down. There we go. Mooney 2 is back in the group because the autopilot has finally let me turn it off. I am now proceeding direct to the Mooney formation flight. I may or may not be. I don't know yet. We'll see. You really liked my idea of the landing one at a time with the escort. Rex, undercarriage is down, mix is fully rich, prop is fully forward, fuel pump is on. Fuel is good, seats and houses What's are more secure. fun, crashing into each other or not crashing into each other? <laughs> Jim Bella Traffic, X-ray Tango, Zillow is turning base, from the two zone. I'm assuming Trent is that one under my left wing, and I'm assuming the ones in front of me are the Mooney flight. Jim Bella Traffic, Mooney flight of three is overflying the field on the dead side. 
doing a midfield downward join for runway 27. 500. Rest of the pups coming out. Speed uh, about 90, 85 is all the uh, touch now. Four flaps. Traffic didn't bear that X-ray. Tank is relieved. Final one, I should say. Get by the traffic. Moving far to three is extending down with this runway to seven. Mooney Stall, this is Mooney 2, did you call me? Ah uh, yes, I was wondering where you were by that time. Roger, I will form up in between you because there's a nice little gap suited for this plane and also it's numerically correct. Oh, 187, yeah. that was a bit thick. Ah, <laughs> uh, we've got one of these things again, I need to re reset the height of the airfield. I actually need to get up there. <laughs> Invited traffic, moving by the three, is turning base, from route 27, and stops in battle. Ready now. Jim by the traffic, X ray take it to the loo. Right, This will be a flat two landing, lads. I'm doing some weird stunts not to overtake many ones. And yeah, in better traffic. We're in flight of training final one with two seconds of something better. I can break set. Gonna lean out the engine a little. That's looking okay, that's looking okay. O2 is off now. Should have done that a little while back. Lights, lights, lights. Boost pump, pedo. Gear is up. And I'll shut it on down. Get the air rocks off first. Open the old canopy. Time is 9.30, pretty much as we expected it. I will check the uh, fuel, which I did forget to do. 22.7 and burst, it'll be 45. What was it compared to on this? Cool. Forty three. We use a little less fuel than we uh, predicted. Not much less. About one gallon. About a little less. There you go. Cool. 
So that is our navigation flight log. We have uh, 45 gallon of fuel remaining in the tanks and we had a 43.9 on the plan. We did lean out a little leaner than uh, than peak. That might have done it. We were flying a little slower as well. That might have also done it. Who knows? Anyhow. I am excited for 2020 Smiley Co. I am very much looking forward to flying this flight again without needing to have so much scenery modifications with this. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to go back in and do that again. Anyhow, over here we can see some wonderful, wonderful fuel, which we can pick up and take the aeroplane down to uh, Parabudu, which is where we're going to go next week. Till then, I guess we need to uh, walk in here, tell the foreman that we've arrived, and that uh, not to kick us off his airfield, or Gina's airfield. Good old Georgina Reinhardt, richest woman in Australia. Welcome to Chinbanta Airfield. It's just a little map of Australia. It's vaguely Australian shape, not really. 429 metres high, which is to say 1,440 feet above sea level. Big chunky gas tank over there. There's a bus, two buses, ready to take folk up to the mine site. One assumes that they're waiting for the Fokker 100 to come in from Perth. There's a water tank for the airfield, I reckon. I wonder if that's a water tank or the Seppo. I have a funny feeling that might be the Seppo. Speaking of the Seppo, I think there's a toilet in here. That's a low roof. My favourite aircraft is anything that can fly under its own propulsion. And with that done, off to Gina Reinhardt's little mine site, where they extract iron ore out of the ground, smelt it into steel, send it overseas to China, where they make it into cars and then send it back to us and sell it <laughs> for a very, very large marker. Anyhow, we'll uh, head back over the aircraft, get ourselves uh, closed up, buttoned up, and we will call it a day. In about uh, 12 hours or so, we have the Friday Night Ops. I'll be flying the Mad Dog. Hope to see you there. I may also make a random broadcast at a very early point in the morning tomorrow with the last post. Anyway, with that said, I have been Musical Aviator. I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the flight over the great sandy desert of Australia, one of Australia's largest deserts. 
and we did it in that little two-seater. And a wonderful two-seater it is. Anyhow, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, any yoke that you want. Um, there are some yokes that cost less than others. I'm enjoying the good old uh, the honeycomb. Very nice yoke for its price. A little bit more than your cheapest yoke, but a lot better than your cheapest yoke as well. Ah, there's a Mooney Club over there. Look at that. Good stuff. Anyhow, I've been Rose Gallic Aviator, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao for now.